All right, guys. So here's a fun topic, a very interesting topic. I know a lot of you have been waiting on this. A lot of people have been messaging me about it, asking me to talk about it. So we're going to talk about relationships and I guess Christian dating just for a second, right? Um, and it's not going to be, there's a scripture I have up and we'll, we'll touch on that, but it's not going to be anything insanely biblically based, um, but just some thoughts on it that, that I believe are from biblical principles, right? So should you date as a Christian? Should you be in a relationship as a Christian? Well, first of all, I'd like to start off by saying that don't just throw around the word dating and relationship lightly, right? Don't just throw it around lightly. Consider this. 97 to 99% of relationships that began in high school, they do not last or end up in divorce if they end up getting married. That's one statistic for you right? <laughs> they, they, they do not last or they end up in divorce if they get married. 97, 97 to 99%, I believe the statistic was. Anyway, anything over 90% to me is alarming, right? So keep that in mind first. Why does this happen? Why does this happen? If you act out of feeling, out of emotion, out of physical attraction too much, now obviously you should be physical attraction, physically attracted to somebody at some point in time that's only natural but if you only act out of that then you will you will probably end up in a bad situation in your life in terms of your relationship status right i'm not saying it's impossible i'm just saying that these are real obstacles that you will have to face as a relationship goes on now <clears throat> What should your mindset be in terms of relationships and dating? Should it, is, it, is, it, is it proper for a Christian to date or be in a relationship? Here's what I would say. I would say you should court someone. You should not date them. You should not be in a relationship with them. See, when you are in a relationship or dating someone, then you start thinking that you need to uh, be very intimate with them. You need to share everything with them. You need to do things like make out with that person. I'm just being real on, on the video today. You need to physically touch them and be intimate. And I'll tell you this, teenage boys or boys in high school, what do you think they, they, they have raging hormones? What do you think they want to do, guys? Put two and two together, right? And honestly, any girl that's in high school, if you allow that, you really are messed up in your brain, honestly. And you have another thing coming for you. You don't know your identity. You don't know your worth. You, you really don't have an idea about life on the whole as yet. You're letting physical feelings and pleasures get to you. And you're basing your emotions off of that. Any person that bases their life off of emotions and only emotions they fail at whatever they do because they're 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 turned one way and then they go another way so quickly ever heard the saying easy come easy go someone comes to you too easily they'll go too easily so here's my advice if you are going to be serious about someone else treat them as if one day they're going to be someone's wife or someone's husband Say, okay, this person that I'm talking to, I know that one day they're going to be someone's wife. One day they're going to be someone's husband. I don't know if it's mine yet, right? I don't know if this is the person that I'm going to be with as yet. So if you're not sure and you know that they will be someone's wife or husband one day, then you should treat them with respect. Yeah, you can like them. Yeah, you can be physically attracted to them. Yeah, you guys can hang out. Obviously, you shouldn't, I don't know if you should court two or three people at the same time. I would say stick with one person, right? Treat it as if it's a real relationship, but be respectful. No inappropriate touching after a certain time. Be a bit old school with it. There's a cutoff time. Let their parents know they will be home by this time if you guys hang out. This is where you're going. This is how long you'll be out. These are the people that will be around me when we are at this place. And be honest and be accountable with it. Be honest and be accountable with it. Okay? So that should be your mindset. Court a person. 
Test them. See if they're, if they're good material or not. Ask them questions. What do you want to do for a career? How much money do you intend to make? If they say they don't know, <laughs> you need to put a pause on that. You need to run away from that person. And if you're the person that doesn't know that what you want to do and you want to get into a relationship, man, you need a wake up call. You need a serious wake up call. How can you get into a relationship, right? First of all, if you're not going to get into a relationship with the intention of getting married one day, then you should not be in that relationship. That is sinful. You're basing it off of lust, off of potentially getting into sexual activities before marriage, which is sinful. Right? And doing these things that you shouldn't do. So get see if you're going to be in a, in a relationship, be serious about it. Understand that this is somebody that I could potentially be married to. But until that time, I will treat them with respect. I will be pure. I will not do anything I'm not supposed to do. Now, so that's the mindset of relationships and dating. And I hopefully you get the gist of it. And, you know, talk to Princess as well and, and ask her. And maybe she can give you some more insight that I'm missing some things on. Now, here's something else. <clears throat> here's something else. What happens if you like somebody, but, you, you know, you, you don't know how to approach them? Or you don't know what to do in that situation? I'll tell you this. Be very careful with relationships. Be very careful with asking people out because relationships can make or break something. It can make an organization, it can make a church, it can make a career, or it can break a career. It can break a business, it can break a church if you let it. Right? Because all of a sudden one person likes another, that person doesn't like them back, they take offense to it when they don't like them back, then they leave the church, they fall away from God. And they say, oh, I can pray at home, I can read my Bible at home. It doesn't work like that. It doesn't work like that, guys. So if you like someone, don't just like them, like nine other people, it's fine. Have a list of 10 people that you may or may not, or that you may be physically attracted to, that you think are good people. So if you get rejected by one, you have nine more that are potentials. Now, I'm not saying like every person that comes across your mind. No, that's not what I'm saying, because every person that's on your list should know what they want to do for a career, should have their life in order should have a relationship with God, should be reading their Bible every day, should be praying every day. And as a matter of fact, some of your, your dates or your hangouts should be coming to church, should be praying together outside of church, should be Bible studies together. I promise you, if you do this, you will get into a marriage that will be successful financially, it will be successful with children. It will be successful with having your own home. You would be able to do so much things in life that other people wish they could only do because you did it the right way. You waited. You waited. So if you like one person and they tell you no, don't be discouraged. You should have nine more. If you don't have nine more, then you go along with the saying, if I, I fail to plan, so I should plan to fail. <clears throat> If you fail to plan, then you should plan to fail. <clears throat> Relationships. Okay, what happens if someone likes you and you don't know what to do? You don't want to hurt them, but they are not your type. Well, don't be a jerk about it. Don't be a jerk about it. Say, oh, you know what? I'm, I'm going to reject that person because I don't like them. And everyone's making jokes around you and you feel awkward and all this stuff because, you know, they like you. But maybe you see them more as a brother or a sister or something. I've been through that many times when I like somebody, they don't like me back. And probably vice versa, too, if I really give it some thought. Right. But you have you have an obligation as a person that if someone likes you, see, you're not just about yourself. You're about the mindset of Jesus. The mindset of Jesus says love your neighbor as yourself. So check this, guys. If you reject someone that likes you in a nasty way and you push them away from God, guess what's going to happen to you? When you like somebody else, they are going to push you away because you have sowed rejection, you will reap rejection. See, sowing and reaping, guys, is not only about money. 
Sowing and reaping is about how you treat people. When you sow kindness, when you sow love, you will reap kindness, you will reap love. When you sow rejection and you sow hate and you sow being double-minded, then you will reap all of that stuff. So guys, be respectful about it. Tell them, you know what, right now I'm not looking forward to a relationship. I need to focus on me. And to be honest with you, in my humble opinion, after seeing all the ups and downs in my life of relationships that I've personally been through and finally (laughs) ending up in something that has success to it because of God, not because of me, because of God, what I found is that anyone under the age of 18 to 21, if they don't have a good income coming in and all that stuff happening for them, don't even think about a relationship. Why do you even want to talk to somebody or find court, be friends, be best friends, but wait on that person. If someone truly loves you, they will wait on you. They won't just be swayed by the next person that looks nice and comes along. And here's my advice as well. If you like someone and they like you, Give them a hard time. Give them a hard time. You know what I'm saying? Well, Stefan, why do I want to give them a hard time? If you give them a hard time and they do it hard, they will stay when things get hard in life. But if it's too easy for them, they don't have anything to fight for it when they come up against obstacles. But if they stay and they spend time and they build something, there's a good chance.